I am so honored and grateful to be with you this afternoon. Permit me to take a point of personal privilege to personally thank former Chancellor Davina Grossman and the entire UMD family for the privilege and the to address you this afternoon. I bring you warm greetings on behalf of the National Board of Directors of the NAACP, the nation's oldest and largest civil rights organization, a multicultural, multiracial, and multi-ethnic organization who in its 107th year is still fighting to ensure equity, justice, and equality for all Americans in this nation. But graduates of 2016, I'm here for you also. And I share in your excitement and your joy on this special day because I've had the opportunity and the privilege on four times in my life to sit where you now sit. And I must tell you that I know that you're not gonna remember anything that I have to say. <laughs> but for the millennial generation of 140 characters or less, I promise you that I will be brief, but I want you to engage with me in a social construct. I want you to get out your devices because I want the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth to trend on Twitter. Will you help me do that? And so through the course of my address, which will be brief, I promise, if you work with me, I want you to consistently tweet, UMassD courage, UMassD courage, and also find your voice, hashtag find your voice. Are you willing participants? Let's see if we can make it happen. Let's begin. Ruskin once said that when we fail to praise labor that deserves reward, two sad things happen. One, we drive individuals from the right road for one of encouragement, and second, we deprive ourselves of one of the happiest of our privileges, and that is the privilege of rewarding labor that deserves reward. Now, I know we've done this once before, but we can never say thank you enough to those who have brought us and supported us to this place. So I want you to stand, turn around, and thank the individuals in the audience who are here for you. Let's give the family, the siblings, the mothers, the fathers, a round of applause. Give them a shout out. You can do better than that, graduates. You can do better than that, graduates. And just by chance, okay, okay. And just by chance, there may be one in the audience who's here alone and has no one to share this special moment with. Let me say this to you. I see you. And I've come all the way from Maryland to be here for you. And when you come across this stage, I'm here to give you a hug and a pat on the back to say, well done. <laughs> Massachusetts has always been a leader in challenging this nation to make democracy work for, for all Americans. From the American Revolution to the protest in 1915 against the Ku Klux Klan's propaganda film, Birth of a Nation, throughout the modern civil rights movement and even today. And as the slogan goes, you can find the spirit of America right here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This generation 
Your millennial generation is no exception. As injustices, inequities, and increased consciousness has given birth to a new generation of college and high school students across the length and breadth of this nation who boldly proclaim no justice, no peace, and the people united together will never be defeated. Whether they blocked I-93 and disrupted Christmas tree lightings on the Boston Commons, or demanded that administrations address systemic issues and remove edifices that are products of racist ideologies, young people have stood up, found their voice, and spoken out loud for things they believed in. As I reflected on what I might say to each of you, and how, as you make this transition in your life, how my story may be helpful to you. More than 31 years ago, on the campus of Virginia Union University, as a 19-year-old sophomore, I joined the NAACP to transform that age-old brand into action for a new generation of civil rights advocates. Graduates, I must admit, I'd never experienced blatant racism, never protested with Malcolm X, or bled like Megar Evers. But I believed inherently that I had a responsibility and an obligation to pave a new road for the future to ensure that our nation's our nation's struggle for progress was not laid in vain. Today, more than 31 years later, I stand before you as the youngest chairman and the fourth woman to hold this position in the organization's history. It did not come easy, and it wasn't because of my unique talents or gifts, but because someone saw something in me. A CME bishop came to me and spoke to my mentor, Hazel Dukes, who was here, and said to her, I've been watching Rosalind. And they came and had a conversation with me. He said, I've been watching you. You don't have everything that we need, and there's still so much more for you to learn, but I see you. I believe in you. I'm gonna stand behind you, and I will support you. And that very learned, very mature, and very erudite bishop stepped down from the office of vice chairman so that I could step up and begin my journey towards servant leadership. Now on my journey, I've learned 10 things, Twitter ready, <laughs> that have helped me as I've tried to lead the NAACP forward. One, is these are the jewels that I leave with you, graduates of 2016. You don't have to compromise to be recognized. Two, trust, but verify. <laughs> Three, always ask for additional information because there's always more to the story. Four, Keep your inner circle close. Fifth, relationships are primary. All else is derivative. Look to your left, look to your right. The people who are sitting next to you are those who will be with you for the rest of your life and along your journey. Or maybe not. <laughs> Six. Maintain spiritual resources, 
and a faith base that helps you through difficult times. Seven, always remember where you come from and the bridges that have brought you over. Eight, and most importantly to the millennial generation, remember that things happened before you got here. <laughs> Believe it or not. Nine, trust the process. Trust the process. And finally, and most importantly, on this journey called life, number 10, you have to enjoy the journey. I promised you I wouldn't be long, and you promised me that you'd help us, us trend on Twitter. So class of 2016, I want you to ponder this thought. What would you do if you knew that you could not fail? Think about that. What would you do if you thought you could not fail? Now, I want you to grab hold to that idea. Find courage, strength, and purpose, and then your true mark of bold leadership will begin. Because courage is the fuel that gives strength to make our journey through life. I believe that each of you, through your matriculation here on this campus, can harness the collective spiritual forces within you as you soar from this place. I challenge each of you to use the knowledge and the skills that you've learned from this great institution of higher learning called the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth to climb every mountain, walk through every valley, and stand firm through every obstacle, with confidence, with faith, and with determination, knowing that society cannot present you with anything that you cannot handle. Find your voice and accept your call to leadership in the arena called life. And as you climb the ladder of success, Never forget that service to others is truly the rent we pay for the space we occupy. And so let's move from this place in unity. Let's get ready to walk across this stage, dedicating yourselves to improving our collective community, embracing a passion for excellence. But most importantly, my friends, having the courage to stand up and boldly take your rightful place in society. Not as the me generation, but as the powerful generation of millennials that you are. I leave you the words of Frederick Douglass. Where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, and where any one class is made to feel that society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, and degrade them, neither persons nor property will be safe. And finally, I challenge you to raise your voices in the public square and secure every opportunity along your life's journey to safeguard justice, eliminate poverty, encourage education, and protect civility. You are the power generation and the future of our nation rest in your hands. If you remember nothing else, remember this. 
the last stanza of your great alma mater. A goodly heritage we share, a beacon from the past to light our path throughout our lives, wherever they are cast. To alma mater, source of truth, our university will stand for right and justice, heir to honor, UMD. In closing, courage must not skip this generation. Peace and power, graduates of 2016.